It's a first visit for the Euro Pro Tour to Tull Farris here in Ireland and the players have been absolutely blown away by the quality of the place. And the quality of the golf has lived up to that. John Ross Galbraith at the top of the leaderboard, 10 under par, the only man to shoot two rounds in the 60s. And I can tell you no one thought that was going to be possible at the start of the week. He's got a nice little three shot cushion heading into the final round, but there is plenty of quality behind him on the leaderboard. Niall Carney has won at this level before. Marco Penge, a great up and coming player, and Paul McKechnie knows just what it takes to get off of this tour. If JR can get off to a fast start, the tournament is very much in his hands. If he drops one or two early doors, it really opens things up. That brings anything up to 35 players right back into this tournament. One man to look out for a little bit further down the leaderboard, starting on six under, is Mark Young. He's already won twice this season, second on the order of merit. If he can make a charge today and get to three wins, that gets him one away from that quarter of a million pound four win bonus. The wind is getting up today, so we could see plenty of action. So let's hand you straight over to your commentary team and see how this final round unfolds. Thanks, Kit. Comprehensive, as always. I'm really looking forward to this, and I know that also applies to my co-commentators, Gary Alice, and a new member of the team, Kim Thomas. Thanks very much, Phil. Let's have a look at John Ross Galbraith then on the first, inviting par five. 540 yards. Looks solid. Very fairly narrow, but that's OK in the semi. Yeah, very good swing. John Ross has got big turn there. It's nicely behind the ball. Very steady. Don't see very many quirky swings at all now on this tour. Good players. You're right, Kim, to describe the first hole as inviting. Mark Young has made two birdies on this par five already. And there is the hat trick. Now, as for Galbraith second, well, Kit is down there. Our leader, Galbraith, has hit a decent tee shot here, just down the right into the rough, but it's lying nicely. It's almost teed up on this rough, in fact. That's why with 262 yards to the pin and about 230 to cover that water, I firmly think we'll see him go for this and make a statement of intent on the very first hole. Second shot then. The water shouldn't be a problem for Galbraith, but it is there in his mind. Second shot on the par five, open up. Very comfortable swing again. Oh, he's laid up. Not taking any chances, Gary. No, an interesting choice. I thought he might have a go there and see if he could really, as Kit say, make a statement and perhaps go for a, an eagle three. Paul McKechnie from Scotland, twice promoted from this tour. He actually won the Order of Merit way back in 2002. He made par on the first and maybe something better on the second. Now Carney, good chance to see his swing from the fairway on the first. Good drive, he's going for it. No layup here, leaning into the shot, driving it forward. Very well played, keep going. Just short. Watson shot there, again driving on forward just in this rising breeze. And a beautiful shot there, absolutely pin high, about six feet away. Cracker. Good start this, he birdied the first, par the second. More than one way to make a birdie. And Galbraith gone down the safe route, laying up with his second. This is his third then, to the par five. Lush green course, in excellent condition. Ooh, a little steamy with that one. Back pin, took it on. Still got work to do. This young man had a very good amateur career. He actually won the Irish Close Championship in 2014, emulating the likes of Rory McIlroy, Darren Clark and Graham McDowell. John Ross, you won the GUI Order of Merit as an amateur last season in your final year as an amateur. What was it like growing up and going through the youth ranks here in Ireland? It was brilliant, yeah. Um, the GUI do a fantastic job with us coming through. 
we we're very fortunate to go on a, a lot of great trips around the world and experience different cultures and different golf courses and it's uh, it's really helped me come through and, and helped me turn pro. Yeah. Looking outwardly, uh, it looks like an absolutely golf mad nation. Do you feel that when you're here? Absolutely, yeah. It's it's massive over here. Um, everyone loves supporting the, the local talent. Um, they always come out in their numbers to support you, and it's just brilliant playing golf here, especially being fr from here. A couple of top tens in your first two events this season. How important was that for confidence straight out of the gate? Yeah, it was massive, yeah. It was great to get off to such a good start. Um, the confidence was very high. Um, I just tried to push it a little bit too much through the middle, and uh, but it was, a, it was a learning curve for me, and I feel like I've come out the other side of it, and uh, I'm playing better now. Coming off of that, what were your expectations coming into this year? I have high expectations of myself. Um, I really uh, believe in myself and rate my game highly. So uh, one of my goals was to win on the Euro Pro this year. So uh, I've got a good chance to do that today. Um, so I'll play my game and just see what happens. Back to the action on course then with Nal Carney. Great chance for an eagle here. 65 on day two after an opening 72. Thrust him into contention. Can he make a three on this opening hole? Not quite. But surely a tap in for the birdie for him to move to minus eight. The man from Royal Dublin Golf Club. Very comfortable. Played all over the world. Even held a, an Asian tour card at one point, Gary. Yeah, very experienced former PGA Cup player as well. As we look at Paul McKechnie, who is, I have to say, a most charming fellow. And this is tracking, looking great. Well done. Fine birdie. You know, he shot a couple of final round 66s so far this season at Montrose and at Moore Allerton. He would love another one today. Third hole, the par four. Nick Watson, this for eight under. Oh, yeah, it's hotting up. They're all chasing down Mr. Galbraith. Yes, they certainly are, uh, Kim, as we look at well, it's a little bit awkward, this just in the longer grass. And that's a, a very good result. It didn't sound quite right, but the result was very good. Yes, yeah, more of a thwack than a whack, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It just sounded a bit heavy. I'm glad the pin wasn't another 15 feet away, but he'd have probably done something different. As we look at Mark Young. Just a little timid. The big hitting Marco Penge on the first for Verdi. To join the eight unders. Oh, he thought he had it. But not so. He remains seven under. I'll tell you what, he was on the walk there, and that's very unusual for a pro. When they think it's in, it's in. Craig Farrelly has shown what's possible by racing to the turn in 32. One hole played by the overnight leader, and already the pressure is cranked up. It was three shots, but now the gap is only two, with McKechnie, Watson and Carney all into their strides. Carney on the second hole, delightful par three over the water. What is on the left, actually, 183 yards is the distance. Smooth action, does he like it? Hugged it a little bit. Long and left are usually close cousins, aren't they, Gary? Yeah, they uh, they are. Club face a little bit closed. Good strike there. Good release of the wrists through the hit. Galbraith, 33rd on the order of merit at the moment. With a victory, he would be just outside the promotion places. So a massive day for him. I must say, I do admire that rhythm. Yeah, it is. It's a cracking rhythm, and uh, he'll be feeling the pressure, though. From the semi-rough on the right-hand side, second shot on the third hole for Thomas Anderson, who shot 71-67 over the first two days. In the heat of the action, just a little shy there. Awkward pin there, back left. I'm talking about awkward. Marco Penge, second shot on the second. Looks to have judged it very well. 
Yeah, yeah just a little bit of movement to the side of the hole, but uh, a good saving shot. Back then to Anderson. Too far to start. This for his first birdie of the day from off the green. Always a bonus if you can hold one of these in rugby terms against the head, and he's done it. Great three. He goes to seven under. Yeah, having a good season, Thomas Anderson, this year. Very good. A little earlier, Gary mentioned that Carney had got a, a PGA Cup pedigree. Well, he held the winning putt, actually, in California in 2015, but that was in no danger of being holed. Nick Watson struggling on the fourth. This for a par. He's been in a spot of bother. Oh, and he still is leaving that one short. He's eight under, remember, right in this. He'll drop at least one shot there. I think it's the kind of course and the kind of day where you're going to see lots of fluctuations in fortunes. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Phil. This certainly is as we watch Galbraith trying for his birdie there. As you can see, just creeping past the edge of the hole. I can tell you Nick Watson hold his bogey putt on the fourth, so he does slip back to seven under as we get back to Carney. Hard work, par putt for him. Slider, is it? No, he thought it was. Dead straight in the end. So he slips back to minus seven. From where he was, he would have expected to get up and down far more often than not. With that, Carney is relegated into a share of fourth. It's Galbraith by two from the Keckney and flying Farrelly. Five under par for this closing round after launching his back nine with a birdie on the 10th. Telfaris Hotel and Golf Resort is making quite a debut on the Euro Pro Tour and the folks here couldn't be more pleased with the partnership. We needed to get the championship field back into the golf course. It opened, the golf course opened in 2000. It hosted the Irish Senior Open back in 2000 and that was the last uh, pro event that was in, on the golf course of any, of any note. So to get the, the pro tour, your pro tour back here this year has been wonderful and to see all these great golfers enjoying it and uh, giving us great, wonderful feedback. It's going to allow us to improve the event next year. We've signed a deal uh, with the Euro Pro Tour to keep it uh, in into a forest until 2020. So we've two more years. We're going to spend some time with the team here um, next week and see how we can make it even a bigger and better event next year. Join us back in County Wicklow for the final round of the Prem Group Irish Masters after the break. Tremendous Tull Farris Hotel and Golf Resort. Home these days to a former winner on the European Tour, Simon Thornton. Simon, you're the tournament professional here at Tull Farris. It's a wonderful venue. What attracted you to here specifically? Pretty much the golf course when I first arrived. 18 good golf holes. Um, it's a beautiful location down the Blessington Lakes here. And the, and the hotel and the, the, whole, the whole aspect of the, the, the area it just suits what I want to do here. You know the golf course like the back of your hand. Would you mind taking us out to a few of your favourite spots? Sure, no problem, let's go. Great, let's get there. Cracking view of the sixth green off the forward tees here, but what's it like off the tips that you boys play it off? Yeah, I suppose it's a little bit more intimidating from back there now. It's about 190 yards uh, to a two-tier green. As you can see, there's a few bunkers around it with the water short. Just a great golf hole. Can play from anything from seven iron if it's down breeze, slightly down the hill, into four iron, three iron. It's, it's a great golf hole and I love playing it. Nice little family of swans chilling out down there on the bank as well. How nice is it to be out in this natural environment yeah. every day? I mean, it's, it's a golf course that just relaxes you straight away. Um, down by the water with the swans here, the lakes on a few of the holes. It's, it's just a fantastic place to be. It relaxes you and puts you in a happy place. Simon, where exactly are we on the course right now? Well, we're just standing in between the eighth tee and the ninth green here. Uh, the ninth's the dog leg right, par five. Uh, we're on the right-hand side here now, looking over, over Blessington Lake there in the green. It's just... Uh, a fabulous spot to be standing watching golf on a day like today. Seems a bit of a silly question, but what is it you love about this particular part of the golf course? Well, I mean, I mean, look at it. You're coming up to a great part of the golf course, the 9th, 10th, 
coming into the scoring part of the golf course then from then on. But certainly this area, the next two holes, the, the scenery is just fantastic. It sort of takes you away from where you're on the golf course and gets you, gets you back to the views. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. Thornton's not going to complete a home victory, but he made the cut and looks set for a top 20 finish. Up top, it's John Ross Galbraith by two from McKechnie after both par the third. With a momentum halting bogey on the 11th, Craig Farrelly has slipped back into a six man log jam in third, which includes Mark Young. And here is Mark on the 375 yard par four fifth hole. Shaped like a hockey stick, really, from above. Kinks away at the end and tried to take it on underneath one of the many fir trees that grace this course, Gary. Eh? Yeah, it's a, a lovely piece of mature land, and as we've seen already, the Blessington Lake, fabulous location. The fourth hole has been miserly in its production of birdies. Only 17 here all week. The fewest of any hole on the golf course. Galbraith, our leader, on the fourth. Third shot on the par four. So he's making hard work of it as well. Can he nestle it close? Pretty much. Kit is down there. Tell us all about it. Galbraith played a lovely wedge shot there, and he's now just got four feet left up the hill to save his par. But it's been really interesting, the start he's made. He chose to lay up on the first, and he's kind of not been too aggressive since then. Starting with a three-shot lead, it's easy to kind of go into defensive mode quite early on, and that's often how you allow the pack back in to chase you. Really need to see something from Galbraith here, just to switch up that momentum and go back on the attack. For Ashley Mansell, a birdie on the first, a bogey on the second, then three pars. That following rounds of 68 and 70. Good player, Ashley Mansell. He uh, keeps the ball in play, knows what he's doing, manages his game nicely, and as we can see, that one right behind the flag. Good shot. Carney. Oh, just off the footing surface. Hopefully you won't get a bubble. No, nice run. Go on. Oh, just perfect. He goes to minus eight. Very smoothly indeed. We talked about his PGA Cup exploits. He was also in the 2009 Walker Cup team. The year he won the Brabazon Trophy. Now, Mark Young made a connection with Timber off the tee, but the, the position he's found himself in is not as bad as it looks. And he's made a good fist of it. Excellent recovery shot. That wasn't easy, Gary, was it, from that lie? No, it wasn't. Downhill, bit out of the rough, got the bunker to, to fly over, but he nipped it off nicely, and there you could see the result. As we have a look at Marco Penge on the fourth hole, this for his birdie. The big hitting Marco Penge. Has he got a good touch on the greens? Ooh, bit of a big hit with the putter, that one, Kim. It certainly was. Had a go at it. Quite a slope on that part of the green as well. Probably just a miscalculation there. As we go back to Mansell. For seven under. On the par three sixth. Nowhere else. Pick that one out. These greens are actually quite slopey. Um, you know, always on the television, it tends to flatten things out. But they are a lot of very, very big and some subtle slopes to be dealt with as we look at John Ross Galbraith. And he's dealt with any slopes there beautifully. Bottom of the cup. It's always that kind of par putt that holds a title challenge together. Not quite a formality for Marco Penge. Four is par, racing the first putt past. Ooh. That's a wide from that range. <sighs> Could be costly. Back to six under. Ouch. So we return to Mark Young after that very good shot from under the tree and a lovely putt. So taking on the dog leg, although he rattled the trees, he improves his score. How important is it and how possible is it to make a quick start over these first few holes? It is possible, but you've got to hit the proper shots. You yeah. can't just 
blast it down and wedge it on around the it's a different golf course than we used to um, but yeah the chances are there if you can hit the shots the, the greens are good so you've got a chance you've come from behind to win already this season do you think that stands you in good stead today yeah um, the lads the lad that's leading I don't think he's been there many times I've not seen his name about anyway so yeah it's amazing what pressure can do so I can get it to a quick start and see what see what he does young and oh so familiar territory namely serious contention he's now joined second with Carney the charger Farrelly has fizzled with back-to-back -back bogeys but with his clean card Galbraith has retained the lead Carney then on this slightly elevated tee on the fifth one of the shortest par fours on the golf course but it's tricky it's not a golf course Gary you have to drive it well don't you You've got to place your drive really well you certainly have, Kim. A lot of slopes on these fairways. You've got to be able to shape the ball into the fairways to hold them. They're narrow. And uh, anyway, let's hear from Niall Carney. Niall, a lovely birdie there on the fourth. How do you assess your start to today's round? Yeah, I feel like I'm hitting it well. And uh, the greens are lovely. It's just a case of getting the focus in now and the energy on the greens and trying to hold a few more. A fair bit of it's wind tough. up there and it's it's quite blustery as well and yeah. you're not always feeling it. How difficult is it to factor that into your shots? Yeah, it's a totally different golf course today. Mm -hmm. You've got to hit, try and hit the ball much lower and uh, taking a lot more club as well. So uh -huh. just a case of trying to commit to that. Now you've been out here for a few holes, have you reassessed what might be a good score today? Ah, it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to know what guys are going to do because, uh, you know, we've got some great wind players out here too. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's not going to affect them. So. It's all about ball flight, really, uh -huh. for me, and just trying to keep it down out of wind and keeping in play. You are one of those players who thrives in the wind. You must be really fancying this now. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, you know, I'm used to playing in wind, obviously, uh -huh. coming from Royal Dublin. And, um, so, yeah, you know, it's kind of a difficult wind, though. It's not really into mm -hmm. or down on any hole. It's kind of across the course, so, um, so it's a little bit interesting. Good stuff. Yeah. Keep it going now. Sure, Thank you. Sure, sure. Two birdies so far for Mark Young, chasing down the leader. Eight under far, playing the six. Nice far three, 184 yards. Can you find the green? No, John Morgan's down there. Tell us all about it. Well, Tol Farris has some cracking holes, and this is one of them. Absolutely beautiful par three, this six. 184, it says on the planner, but I tell you what, it's 173 from the back, two yards on, 171. That's to the front of the green. The 184 is to the middle of the putting surface. Well, it's surrounded by four beautiful bunkers. It really is. Big tier in the green as well to boot on the right-hand side. Kind of faces you at like a 45-degree angle. Not a big green, this one, either, so really difficult for the players to hit this baby. You know, that water as well has been pushed right up towards that green. It's only five shy of that green. So you've got to make sure you get your number right and you hit it on that dance floor. If you don't, you're going to have a really awkward chip. Now, the trick around this golf course is, is this wind. It is blowing an absolute hoot. It's going to catch a lot of players out. And if you get caught out by this one, like there's a little bit of wind into you, it feels like it's down, but it's actually into you. You could balloon up and all of a sudden you're going to rack up a, a big number coming up short in that water, having to drop way back. Awkward one on. Now, Grip down the shaft, back of the stance, low punch, drill it. And look at that. I can't do that much better, boys. Nice little draw from right to left. Oh, squeezed it onto the putting surface. Give myself a chance at a two. It's what you want to take all day long. That's why they call him Magic Morgan. And I'll tell you what, Thomas Anderson would love to get inside that. Quite, but straight down the banner, they say. Have a look at that swing, Gary. Yeah, again, um, you know, a good swing, a little bit shorter than some. Right leg straightening there. A little bit, you know, it's his own style, slightly stiffer in the legs, but he's had a very good season this season, Thomas Anderson. Very much hands and arms, isn't it, that's one? Mm, well, it's not a big body rotation. Carney, looking for quite a lot of loft here, and too much loft, not enough distance pays the price. Our first view today of Joe Bryce, who birdied two of the first three holes, but then bogeyed the fourth. Not alone in that. That's a great shot, and you could see there is he was really trying to punch it into the wind and has done it fabulously. So well, it nearly fits straight in the hole. Well, I said this man was running hot. Got some work to do here to 
make his par as Mark Young off the slope as he judged it. Pretty well. well Running out to what? Five feet? That left for par. Carney trying to become the second consecutive Irish winner on the Euro Pro Tour after Tim Rice at East Sussex National. Rice didn't make the cut here, surprisingly. And that wasn't his best effort. Anderson, this birdie putt from the front of the green. Pretty much straight up the hill. Yeah, beautifully red, just was tracking straight into the hole the moment it left the putter. Beautiful effort. A real danger man. He's had some good results this year in some very low rounds. Galbraith playing with Niall Carney. His second shot fully 35 feet away and not quite the tap in left for the par. But I can tell you he did hold it, staying 10 under. Yes, the greens, because of the breeze, they're just, they are very slopey greens, so they're perhaps not quite as fast today as they sometimes encounter. But that was very good from Mark Young, having been off to the right. Nice up and down. Carney, can he save his par? Shy of the green in two. Here for three. Yes, is the answer. Firmly in. Confidently in. Farrelly has bounced back from consecutive drop shots with a birdie, his sixth of the day on the 13th. Even so, he's three off the pace that continues to be set by the pride of Whitehead Golf Club in Northern Ireland, John Ross Galbraith. You know, we're nearer to Dublin than Dallas, but right now the lead role in the Prem Group Irish Masters goes to JR. Welcome back to the tranquil, scenic banks of the Blessington Lakes. And welcome back to final round action from the Prem Group Irish Masters, where the latest news is that John Ross Galbraith has just parred the sixth to remain two shots clear. Now second on his own, after Mark Young's bogey on the seventh, it's Niall Carney about to take on the 413-yard par four seventh. So here we are, little waggle settling into position. Whoosh, he's not held back on that. But as we can see, the body language suggests it could be in a bit of bother. Yeah, a little bit of thick rough, but only just off there. It's interesting, quite a narrow, again, as Kim said earlier with players, one or two of them are still a bit hands and arms, and Khan is one of those that plays very much that way. The overnight leader, John Ross Galbraith. I like the deliberate takeaway, setting it at the top of the backswing nicely, but is he unhappy with that one too? Mm, maybe, Sandy. Yeah, I think you're right, uh, Kim. I think that one plopped down into the sand. As we skip along to Mark Young. A lot of dust up with that. Let's hope he got the ball first. He certainly did. He really is a pin seeker. Anderson hoping for something equally quality. That will do nicely. But for JR Galbraith on the seventh, it's going to be tough to get so close. Galbraith is in the bunker here, but it's not the lip or getting it up that's going to concern him. The big struggle here is that ball is above his feet and with the pin tucked way over on the right, that's going to give him a right to left shape when he really wants to hit a fade. From here, he's got to be conservative and go center of the green. Good luck then, JR. 
Man from Whitehead Golf Club near Belfast. Pretty golf course that is as well. Stance looked stable. Has he got good contact? He has. Deserved round of applause. Well played, J.R. Garbraith. Now, Ashley Mansell almost on the par 5, ninth in two. Trying to rebound from a bogey on eight. Whew, what a good shot that was. Just a little firm. If it had hit the pin, I think it would have gone disappearing down into the cup. Carney on the dog leg seventh hole. 413 yarder. Plays fourth easiest on the, the members' scorecard. The players are finding it not so easy today, although, what am I saying? Commentator's curse right at it. Great shot. We saw Marco Penge's three-put bogey. Very galling that was for him on the fourth. Since then, though, the ship has been steadied with a couple of pars. And again, an illustration of the club used. He's length off the tee. What an advantage, Gary. Yeah, it is. And, and what's impressive about Marco Penge is not only does he hit the ball a long way, but he hits it remarkably straight. Mark Young, three back of the leader. Chance to get within two. Oh, can't believe that's just feathered away at the end. Ounce more pace and it may have held its line. Big chance gone there. Stay seven under. Galbraith's birdie putt following that good escape from the bunker. Just a little bit of movement off the edge of the hole but he's not hit it hard enough so we're never going to find out almost an eagle on nine surely a birdie for Ashley Mansell indeed and birdies for him just outnumbering bogey so far three against two Carney good chance this for nine under to get within one of Galbraith. Oh, just borrowed too much. Well, they call it missing on the pro side, but it's no consolation, Gary, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. I've never really understand this, did that one? It, you, you missed it. You didn't get the line or the strength right. <laughs> now, Anderson. The approach deserved a birdie. Oh, and it's forthcoming. 13th in the order of merit. Victory would transport him into a promotion place. Now, come on, Marco. This to edge a little closer to the top for seven under. Oh, he's got the line right. Firmly in, too. Well hold. Not dramatic from Galbraith, but so far, at least, it's effective. By adhering strictly to par, John Ross sticks too clear of Carney and Anderson, whose next test is the lengthiest hole on the course. Here with his take on a terrific par five, it's John. Well, we come to a humongous par five, and you can just see that. 78 less off this tee, it's 608 yards this night, and it runs right along adjacent to the water down the left-hand side to boot as well, down the right, lost ball territory for the players. But this hole now, bringing the tee up that 78, really helps the boys really take it on, but it's a dangerous tee shot, really tight up there. Walking up to this shot, I'm sitting pretty in the fairway, and, well, Bob's your uncle, I am absolutely in prime spot to attack from his second shot, but it's not easy. From where that tee box is, over on that right-hand side, it turns this hole into a massive dogleg from left to right. Then you're up to a nice raised green in the distance, beautiful, lovely, inviting shot. Big trees lurking at the back of the green as well. It's very tempting, isn't it? Long, narrow green, this one. Coming in high and hopefully soft. Oh, go on, beauty. Oh, go on, beauty. Get in, get in. Oh, he's down the throat, he's down the throat. Go on! Oh, oh, oh! How far? It's got to be six, seven feet, hasn't it? Got to be. I'll take that all day long. Anderson is made of ground on the field so far on this hole with a par 
and a birdie because it's only playing marginally under its par of five. It's playing at 535 yards today with the tee brought up slightly. Well, slightly, some 70 yards. <laughs> yeah, that back tee is very, uh, very spectacular, but it is, it's narrow and a long way even for these boys. <laughs> Mark Young from the left-hand side. Nicely through that, good clearance, driving it. Uh, he's pushed that slightly there. I'm not sure whether that's in the bunker or not. Neither is he. No, there is a bunker over there, but lots of humps and hollows as we look at Carney's second shot. Eighth hole. Again, you see a lot of players just in the semi because the cut fairway is pretty narrow on this golf course. But modern clubs it's somehow control the ball better. They seem to get on the ball better than when we played, Kim. Yes. Do a lot of things better than when we played. Some awkward cambering on the fairways here makes it a good test of driving. Galbraith. Second into eight. Oh. He's hit quite a few shots to the edges of green so far, but he hasn't suffered. Ashley Mansell, who won the PGA West Region Championship last year at Burnham and Barrow, he can go low. This July in the Taunton and Pickeridge Pro-Am, he shot a 62. That's a low number, by anyone's standards. Aggressive shot there, but he's getting up again. Yeah, it is, and pretty much on the highest part of the golf course up here, on these holes. As you said, Kim, Mark Young found that bunker, leaving that most awkward sort of 35-yard bunker shot. Very difficult. Yeah, an error, really, with that second shot, wasn't it, with an iron? Anyway, Anderson, awkward lie, tall man, left foot well above the right. Oh, superbly played. One of the best shots we've seen so far. Awkward for the tall man, but he made it look very simple. In a foot or so to come on to the green for... Calbraith, and then just a little bit of movement from left to right. Oh, it would have been if he'd got it hard enough to get up the slope, but uh, under hit like that, it takes the big swing. You can almost see the wind filling its part with that as well. Mansell created a very good chance here. Can he take it? Yes, he can. He goes to minus eight. Welcome to the party, Ashley. Welcome back, we should say. He's had success on home soil before, as Carney. Back-to-back -back Irish PGA Championship winner in 2014-2015. And he birdies the eighth. Minus nine. Concertina effect going on here. Nice battle this, isn't it? Calbraith there, uh, still leading, but... They're all breathing down his neck now. It's for par. No. He slips to minus nine. Pressure on. And it's telling. Yes, that was a disappointing error for Galbraith. Now, what can Mark Young do having come out of that awkward bunker? Oh, he can simply chip it in and still make a birdie. Good man. Talk about a tournament tightening up. Now only two strokes cover the leading nine players. And there's a trio at the top. Galbraith, Carney, and a player with four top tens on the hotelplanner.com Euro Pro Tour already this season. Now Thomas Anderson, the man from the Centurion Club, could be in line to break his title duck. Tom, how pleased are you with three under on the front nine? Yeah, I think it's going well. Uh, hit some really good shots. Uh, hold some really good putts. Mm -hmm. um, just got to keep going, really. How aware are you of where that places you in the tournament at the moment? Uh, I know it's up there, mm -hmm. but um, still got nine holes left, so not getting ahead of myself or anything. I'm just going to, you know, focus on the next shot, mm -hmm. do a bit of... Uh, Mindfulness, you know, <laughs> you know, meditation while you walk in or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, just got to keep keep doing what I'm doing because that's why I'm here. 
Absolutely tricky, blustery conditions. How low do you think is possible on this back nine today? Uh, I've really got no idea. Mm -hmm. um, it's a difficult question because, you know, you don't know how many putts you can hold. I mean, all I'm trying to do is hit nine out of nine greens yep. and see what happens. That's, Great that's it. Good front nine, Tom. Keep it going. Thank you. Thank cheers. You. The 14th of the 16 events that make up the 2018 Euro Pro Tour schedule is developing into one of the most intriguing. With the final three ball fast approaching the turn, Carney, Galbraith and Anderson are co-leaders of the Prem Group Irish Masters. Then you'll find three Englishmen just a single shot behind, Mark Young among them. He's now taking on the fearsome 10th hole. Yeah, it's a dandy of a par four, right to left, uh, playing 447 yards. The camber is all the way down to the left. Trees on the left to avoid as well. A really tough shot, playing on average 4.4 against its regulation of four. Scenic hole, yes, pretty, but also pretty tough. The 10th. Indeed so, Kim. The players are finding this very difficult, not only off the tee, but also into the green. But here we are, Mark Young having placed his tee shot in the ideal position. But you can see it's difficult because the ball's above his feet, very easy to tug it left, and then it's just a lost ball if you go over there. But that's a fine shot. He'll be pleased with that. On the topic of lost balls, I can tell you that Galbraith has had to take a provisional off the ninth tee. He was guilty of a, an extreme wide. Yeah, you can just see the markers there. Marking the boundary of the course, Anderson at 10. Slightly better lie comfort-wise for him. Has the look of David Toms about him, doesn't he? Oh, that sort of golfer. Nicely played. Now oh, Kearney. Good-looking shot, chasing it forward. Yep, nicely into position up this hill on the ninth. But there's nothing nice about the ninth for Galbraith. The search for the ball was abandoned. This, he's fourth. And from the left-hand semi as well, though the lie is good. Par five, remember. Not on the green yet. Spot of other here on the turn for him, Gary. Yeah, this could end up by being a big number. It will be a real setback. As we go forward to the par 3 11th, 174 yards alongside the lake. Lovely looking hole. And a cracking looking shot from Ashley Mansell. Uphill putt there for his birdie. To Mark Young on the 10th he won't know what's happened behind to Galbraith that won't be in his mind at all as he goes for his birdie and there's a little bit of work left in that one too four and a half feet maybe for his far to remain eight under now Connie this pitch in looking straight down at the flag a little bit uphill, Green's about three feet above from where he's playing from. Throws it in nice and high, uses the contours. I would say he will take that position gladly. Only the top 60 in the order of merit qualify for the Tour Championship at Desert Springs in Spain in October. A good finish here would see Ashley Mansell guaranteed to be there but that wasn't good in any way, shape or form. Back to the 10th and Thomas Anderson. Joint leader at the moment on minus nine. This for minus 10. Oh, the pace is good. Oh, and the line is perfect. Mindfulness works, obviously. 
back to the ninth in the damage limitation exercise of John Ross Galbraith. Oh. There, practicing what he's been preaching. What a shot. What a bonus. JR here on the chipping and putting green at Tull Farris. Just how important is the short game when you get to the elite level of professional golf? It's very important, yeah. It's the most important part of the game, really. Um, it's where all the scoring is done. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter how good or bad you're hitting it, if, you're, if you have a good short game, it's always going to save you and improve your score. Most amateurs like to get in the range, hit ball, smash it as far as they can with driver. How much time and effort do you invest in really sharpening up the short game skills? Yeah, I would invest quite a lot. Uh, the majority of my practice would be short game. You know, it's it's where it's won and lost, really. So for to get to the next level, you, if you can improve your short game each each year, then you're, you're going to do well. Cool, I think it's time to see it in action. So we've got a little okay. bit of kind of rough grass here, as we've got in a lot of spots at Tull Ferris. So mm -hmm. if I just chuck a ball down there, not a bad little lie. So what are you thinking about as you get into setup? So I'm, I'm just thinking about where I want to land the ball. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I'm just kind of judging judging how far I want to swing the club to get the ball to move that far. Feet quite close together and quite open yeah. to the target there? Yeah, that's it, yeah. What's the advantage of that for you? Uh, I just like to get it off my right foot mm -hmm. so I can have a nice descent and blow on the ball and the ball can just pop up then and Perfect. release up the green. Perfect. Go ahead and see if we can play one. Superb, easy as that. Stunning bit of finesse there from J.R. Galbraith with his wedges around the greens. Hopefully you've picked up some tips and that'll help you get up and down the next time you miss a green in regulation. Pressure time for Mark Young. All pressure is self-induced, they say. Well, he's put it on himself here, this for far. Oh, on that tricky 10th, claims another victim. Young goes back to seven under. And Mansell is hoping to avoid a three put one hole ahead. That really was wasteful. Had an opportunity to make birdie. He walks off the green with a bogey. Big moment here for now, Carney then. For the four on the par five, ninth, it's in, ten under. Reaching double figures, never a bad feeling, Gary. Yeah, lovely spot. Birdie to finish the half. For the first time today, Galbraith is not out in front or sharing the lead. Instead, Thomas Anderson and Carney are jointly top of the standings. After his bogey at the 10th, Young sinks to tied fourth, three back. Carney, having taken the short walk from the ninth, opting to play, as you can see, the iron to get on the top of the hill. Narrows down tremendously. It's a sensible play. Gary, there's a really good collection of par threes here at Tolfaris, the 11th being one of them. Certainly is, Phil, and uh, 174 yards. Very, very scenic, this. Some mounds. The bunkers for these players probably not really going to come into play. Green sits in a bowl. Choose the right club. Uh, green's not very big. You should have a chance of a birdie putt, but it's a very slopey green, as we saw a few minutes ago, where Ashley Mansell three-putted from only about 10 feet. Anderson's tee shot, very good. Hole high. That breeze is not relenting. Good impression of how tough this 10th uh, hole is from this narrow side, from any side really. Carney. Edge of the green. Now, for me, Gary, that would be TPC, three-foot country. Yes, yeah, quite a long way away. And again, there is really no sort of flat green. So if you if you do have a lengthy first putt, judging the pace is very difficult as we watch Mark Young there. 
negotiating up and over in the humps and hollows and getting ever closer. That's a pretty good result from there. Descending blow, like Albraith was talking about earlier on. Essential to get the contact correct between club face and ball, not too much grass in between. We've seen 11 eagles on this 13th hole this week. Is Ashton Turner going to make it 12? You better believe it, the man who qualified for this year's Open. He actually won the qualifier at Hollinwell, beating a former Ryder Cup player, Oliver Wilson, by three shots. Up to seven under. Carney then from long, long range. Two putts from here would be good on the 10th. Some work left there. You just see the marker on the left-hand side for a stunning second shot from Galbraith on that 10th. Another really good look for Birdie here for Anderson on the par 3 11th. If he can hold it, that would make it four on the bounce, and he is right there in this tournament going into the back nine. It's about 16 feet uphill. Tricky one to read. Looks like it has a bit of a double break, but overall, I think just left edge and firm uphill slightly into the breeze, and he could be on a really hot streak here. Well, Kit's given us plenty of information is Thomas party to the same information well it swung across a bit more it said it would swing from the left a little bit and it fooled Thomas now Carney's first putt not up to his normal standard this to secure his par oh, would you believe he's left that short as well a poor three putt really really hurts when you don't give it a chance back to minus nine what a must make this is for Mark Young good, good save good save they said very true now this little almost a tiddler for John Ross Galbraith firmly in well, I have to say, that was dreadful. He tried firm. Still, back up the hill. Disappointed to make a par. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's be, that's almost unbelievable. Golf never fails to amaze. With a birdie on the 15th, Scott Fallon climbs into a share of third with first-round leader Liam Murray and the suddenly reeling Galbraith. The back nine began on a negative note for Carney, leaving Thomas Anderson in sole possession of top spot. The Prem Group Irish Masters remains very much up for grabs. County Wicklow is known as the Garden of Ireland, and one of its finest fruits, in a golfing sense, is the Telfaris Hotel and Resort, hosting for the first time the Prem Group Irish Masters. Following a birdie on the 13th, Ashley Mansell climbed into a share of third with John Ross Galbraith. Niall Carney's par the 11th to stay second, trailing Thomas Anderson by just a single shot, that after Anderson's regulation figure on the 12th. On the 13th, well, this hole is birdie country. Playing on average 4.56 for the players. Anderson's second shot. Can he green it? Yes, he can. Oh, no, not quite. Just missing on the left. I think now, Gary, Mark Young needs something special. Yes, he's perfectly capable of it and confident. You know, having won a couple of times this season, he's uh, he's certainly capable of pulling something out in these last uh, few holes. Very brisk action, isn't it? It's a swish, isn't it? It is a swish. He's uh, He looks like a bit of a throwback to some top players from the 60s, I think. Ashley Mansell, second sh shot to 14. 
and it's working its way nicely using the contours of the green there to great effect it's going to be a commendable outcome for the touring professional here at Telfaris, Simon Thornton. Minus five, he finishes inside the top 20. That with the help of a friend and a work colleague, Pat Barrett. These boys can, can all play golf. I, I watched uh, loads of it this week, and it, it's, it's great to be able to get up close to these guys. And that's the beauty about Euro Pro Tour, and that's why all the fans, and, and why we had such a big crowd here today watching the, the final round because you can get inside the rope, so to speak. You can get up close. You can hear the crispness of those iron shots going into greens and dancing around the pins. And uh, it, was, it was brilliant. Um, the, 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 the place was flat calm yesterday, um, and it, it played as easy as it would ever play. And, and we were delighted to get course records here. And the guys spoke very highly about the, the resort um, all week and delighted, absolutely delighted the way they embraced it. And, and I, as, as the guy that holds up golf in the resort, I, I couldn't be prouder, really couldn't be prouder. Happy man, Pat Barrett. And so will Thomas Anderson be if he can get it close here and birdie this one. He's had five birdies so far in the round. Third shot on the par five, 13th. Is good. Can Ashley Mansell? Pop this one in for his birdie on 14. Very slippery putt down the hill. Oh, one inch here, swung away, just crept. They are so subtle, these greens. It's very, very difficult to read. One hole back on the 13th. Mark Young is looking to replicate what he did on this par five yesterday, i.e. make an eagle. Needs to be firm with it. Uphill. Oh, just the pace letting him down. But a very comfortable birdie four. Tap in. Yeah, eight under. Not much in it for Thomas Anderson, Gary, on this short putt, is there? No, there isn't. Uh, there isn't much on this one. Needs to keep it just inside the hole and, and firmish. Yeah, just see, I mean, he, he was, <laughs> it seems incredible, but he actually knocked it on the wrong side of the hole. Well, despite that, Anderson could be five holes away from his maiden win on the Euro Pro Tour, but Carney's targeting a birdie on the 13th to regain a share of the lead. Got some work to do here, though. Sammy Ruff is kind of out of position. Can't reach the green from there, surely. Having to loft it over the trees. Oh, he almost did, you know. That was a very powerful lofted hit from there, wasn't it? And so, an expansive swing. Getting all the way through the shot. Nice coordination there of upper and lower body. Now, Kitts on the 14th with news of Mark Young. Mark Young is going to need some serious Seve Ballesteros brilliance to get the ball on the green from here. We're over in the right-hand side trees. He has got a simple little pitch out towards the bunker. He can leave himself about 50 yards short of the green. But if he's feeling aggressive and wants to chase this one on, there is an opportunity. He's got to shape it, though. He's going to need about 30 to 40 yards of left to right fade, and it's going to have to stay low under these canopy of trees. He's an aggressive player. Not so sure he'll take this one on, though. You don't like it. No, I think this one, is, they talk about trees being 80% air, but he's got an awful lot of tree to go through there. I have to say, Kim, that's a tremendous shot. He used the gap, he shaped it a little bit and worked it onto the front of the green. Well, the ball was above his feet and you could see here that the gap isn't that wide. Hit down on the shot, punched it forward, beautifully executed, and he almost got a bit of cut spin, didn't he? It is, which is a tremendous effort. I know Kit mentioned it, but actually to pull that off is some shot with the ball above your feet. Wow. Anderson. Meanwhile, second to 14. Not quite getting the result that we saw Ashley Mansell get there. A little bit wider. Al Carney. 
we've seen this little bump up from the green before up and onto the green then it's all downhill pretty nicely judged Nick Watson not in contention on minus four playing the final par five on the golf course the 15th 520 yards and playing it like that the gimme tap in eagle he goes to minus six nice money shot now this would be the jackpot if young may birdie after that exhibition of escapology After the tee shot, he would have gladly settled for a par, Gary. Yeah, a lot of players went right there. It's a big dog leg, that hole, and a lot of players have overcut it. As we have a look at Ashley Mansell, just from the fringe, this putt for an eagle. Should be a pretty tidy birdie, though. Yep, another one to help the scorecard. Thomas Anderson, the leader, is for 11 under. Got to be careful, though. Yeah, well played. He will stay at minus 10. Here, yeah, Carney's got a chance to catch him, Gary. Yeah, and as we've seen, there's, you've got to be careful. If you if you're going outside the hole, you can get the pace dead right. But that was good. Kept it inside the hole, firm. But even there, you can see just a whisker of movement. Scott Fallon leads in the clubhouse. Ashley Mansell's now alone in third, but still fighting it out in joint pole position are Thomas Anderson and fulfilling a home fixture, Ireland's vastly experienced Niall Carney. His philosophy, half clubs will travel. He has competed all over the world, but the man who represents Royal Dublin Golf Club, his proudest moment, arrived on home soil. Now you won the Irish PGA Championship in 2014 and retained it again in 2015. How big an achievement was that in your career to date? Yeah, it was a great achievement, Kit. Uh, something I always wanted to win. Uh, it's great history in the event, great Irish names on the trophy, and a uh, huge kind of... Uh, I suppose satisfaction for me to win it and then obviously win it back to back was even more special, you know. Does it feel different winning on home soil? Ah, I think it's probably home comforts add to it, as in I'm staying at home this week, you know, I'm yeah. playing well. Uh, I've played well in Ireland uh, generally over the last number of years and so, uh, you know, it's probably an aspect of, of being able to stay at home and, you know, feeling comfortable at home and, uh, and, and so, yeah. What did you make of the layout when you first saw it? Yeah, I thought it was great. You know, it's a real hidden gem. Uh, it's in really good condition. Uh, you know, the scenery around the back holes there around by the lake are, are you know, stunning. So, so it's good, yeah, I was really impressed. And, um, you know, there's a few kind of different holes around the turn, eight, nine, ten are, are kind of difficult holes as well. So, so no, it's a tough design. You've had seven top 11s over the past couple of years on the Euro Pro Tour. You're in contention quite regularly. What do you yeah. attribute that consistency to? Ah. You know, I work really hard on my game. Uh, you know, I love the game as well. And, and so therefore I love playing, I love competing. Obviously I've played well, I've got myself into really good positions, but you know, I probably haven't closed out as many as, you know, as I would have liked. And, um, you know, I put that down to partly patience and then partly hitting the right shots at the right time as well. And, you know, the standard's really good out here too. And even, you know, going out today, I'm in the final group, but, you know, I'm probably going to have to shoot, you know, certainly 60, 66, 67, 68 to win, you know, so it's not easy. Carney was runner-up at East Sussex National last year. Can he go one better this time? Good test for second shot here on this 409-yard par 4, 14th. Another edge of green. Shot coming up for Carney. Mark Young's tee shot. 520 yard par 5 so looks to be heading a bit right yeah there's, there's a couple of bunkers down there not sure whether they found it or just avoided it Mark Young playing with Thomas Anderson 
his tee shot on that 15th. Meanwhile, our man Kit has caught up with Mark Young. How do you feel you've been playing today? Not as, not as well as I've done the first two days. Mm -hmm. um, scoring a little bit better than I did first day. And just got to give myself some chances on the way in. Mm -hmm. a really, see a, what happens. A really aggressive recovery shot from over in those trees on the previous hole. What was the thought process there? Uh, well, I'm, I'm two behind and there's only four to play. Yeah. I can't afford to lose any more on him. You did say fortune favours the brave <laughs> after you hit it. so. Uh... Uh, you clipped a few on the way out. <laughs> it got yeah. there, that's all that matters. Keep going, Mark. Cheers. Thanks for the chat. Young, one of numerous players still in contention, and Kim, so too, is Mansell. He is, he's nine under par, playing 16. Nice par three, they're all good par threes here. 200 yards, it's playing. Slightly elevated tee, wind off the right. He's judged it very well indeed. Now, Carney. From the fringe, up the hill, quite a steep rise there, and uh, work to do. Mark Young was a semi-professional footballer in his 20s. He would love to complete a hat-trick here at 15, i.e. his third consecutive birdie on this par 5. No nonsense action. Reminds me of the tempo, Gary, of Matt Fitzpatrick. Yeah, it certainly is. It's a very quick rhythm, but he keeps his balance very well. He's uh, He knows how to use his game. He's also a proud northerner. He certainly is. That comes across. And actually a very nice fellow. Carney. And it goes. Good steady par four on that 14th. And a good steady season for Thomas Anderson so far. Tied sixth at Camberwell, third at Lunkhurst Hall, with an opening 63, mind you. Tied sixth at Moore Allerton. Is this going to be the breakthrough? Well, it's very tight at the top, isn't it? I'm enjoying it. It's exciting. No, no, I can't. Be. Zips it through, quick hand sending now, picks the tee up quickly. Must be straight. Indeed it is. Get a good sight of that fairway there, how narrow and sort of wiggly wormish it is, isn't it? It's, 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 a, it's a real driver's golf course. Yeah, this you're absolutely right. I mean, you must drive the ball well here, otherwise you could end up with a half-decent cricket score around the course. Go on. Oh. Pretty well judged. A totally stress-free birdie. We said don't discount Mark Young, and that's the reason. Suddenly, he's only one off the pace. Yeah, he's showing his grit. Mansell down the green here. A slider. That means left to right. And he means it, and he's loving it. Ten under, he goes. Three, share the lead. It's been a crazy day, and with an eagle on 15, McKechnie could be back with a shot. Needs to turn. Oh, good effort. He's played very well today, Paul McKechnie, without really having any luck at all. That's a birdie, but uh, first one since the second hole. Three share the lead, but it's going to change surely very quickly. This is for 12 under and a two shot lead for Anderson. Get in. Oh, edge of the hole. Mark Young, one very interested spectator there looking on. 11 under it is. Looking at this, six players could yet be crowned the Prem Group Irish Masters champion. The likes of Young, McKechnie and Galbraith need a stirring finish. Anderson's in the driving seat, but Carney and Mansell are poised to strike. Mansell on the penultimate hole. 369-yard par four. You can see the test that's facing the players for the second shot. 
It's very wet. Yes, it certainly is. As we see what Carney can do on the 15th. We've seen a lot of golf balls just around the edge, haven't we? I know we've remarked on it before, but uh, just shows how difficult. The last par three, the 16th, 200 yards it's playing, a very scenic hole, one of many on this golf course. Lake on the left-hand side, the obvious hazard, green side on, and two bunkers guard front left and right. Pin today sort of tucked on the left-hand side, so just the tiniest, tiniest bit of draw from the middle of the green can put the ball very, very close. That's on, but nearly as far away as he could have been. Back at 15. Third shot for Carney. Par five, remember, this hole, so a birdie chance, but oh dear, that's lacking. On 17, Mansell to tie Anderson at the top. Not enough pace. Back to 16. Anderson's left himself 50 feet right the way across this green here on 16 for birdie. This one's all about laying it close and getting out of here with a par. That's by no means easy. He's holed some great putts today, but he also missed that short one for birdie on 13, so that will be in his mind. It's ever so slightly uphill. It's going to swing from right to left a little bit as well, and downwind, there's every danger you can just let this one just get away from you. Very good point, Kit. He won't want to leave himself a four or five footer for his second putt here. From the lower area first, up onto the ridge. Now it needs to start slowing down. Not quite in the virtual dustbin lid, Gary. No, not quite, but at least that one's going to be uphill. Oh, it hasn't been John Ross Galbraith's day, but can he earn himself some money with an eagle on 15? Good effort. It'll be a birdie. 68, 66 to start off the tournament. It's going to be his first birdie of the day. He's had to wait until the 15th to chalk it up. One of those knee knockers. Oh, no such thing for the experienced Mark Young. He remains nine under, two to play. Mark Arney, who's making sort of steady progress up this hole. He's getting nearer to the hole. But a par is really at this stage going to feel like a drop shot. Yes, and that represents good news for Anderson, especially if he can make par on 16. Hold your nerve. See the shot. Straight back, straight through. Bang. Pick it out. Throughout this Euro Pro Tour campaign, Anderson's caught the eye. Now this former England amateur international, who turned pro in 2015, finds himself two holes and four good swings away from a breakthrough win. Will Anderson remain on top when it matters most, or should we doubt Thomas? The tale of Telfaris reaches its climax in just a moment. Hello there again from a truly lovely location, Telfaris Hotel and Golf Resort in County Wicklow, where, after safely tucking away a par on the 17th, Thomas Anderson stands on the verge of victory at the Prem Group Irish Masters. But what an examination the daunting 18th provides, as John Morgan is about to explain. 
Well, the final hurrah is here, 18. It's a par four, it's a cracker as well to boot. Water right here, just off the edge of the tee box, and it goes all the way up to the green and bends round from left to right. This is awesome stuff. You've got the bunker on the left-hand side, just looking at here, about 280 to carry that baby on the left, so bigger hitters can get there. If you want to win the event, find the fairway. If you win in the bunker, then you've got to play a wonder shot. I know what I prefer, I prefer the fairway. All right, come on, Johnny. Real narrow entrance to this green, as you can see up 18. Great second shot in, over the bunker, over the lake, very daunting. Miss it down the left-hand side. Obviously, not really going to be able to see the bottom of the flag because there's a big dip down there, and obviously, that makes for an awkward up and down. Really topsy-turvy green. You know, the pin will probably be around this back area, and it gives you a pretty straight putt. I'm just looking at it now, and I've got to say, I forgot my putter, so I'm going to putt with me a wedge. I'll do a Ben Crenshaw. He was pretty good like this. But anyway, a little bit of turn off the right-hand side, see if I can give it a chance. Nice little roll. Greens are running lovely and smooth. And that'll be a little tap in four on a great golf course here at Toll Farris. And I tell you what, winner takes it all. Ten grand on the line. Come on, boys. He used the word, I used the word. It really is daunting. The definition of a sting in the tail. Anderson. Hopefully his final tee shot. Oh, he's tugged it left, making ultra sure not to get anywhere near the water on the right. Let's have a little look at this lovely 17th. Only 369 yards. It's all about precision, really with an iron for these guys to knock it in between those two bunkers that we can see, because if you get in those, it's awkward to play over the water. Only really a nine iron, eight iron pitching wedge if you go a little bit further down, but again, a green that is lots of umps and ollers. It's, uh, it's one that is a real ankle biter. Yes, no pushover, but in comparison to the 18th, it's the calm before the storm. It is. Carney's tee shot. Pretty good. Have a good look from there. Gosh, you can feel the tension. It's so close at the top. Mansell to 18, third shot. Yes, it was all he could do is in the edge of the water hazard off the tee and to play it down to there. Now we get to see that lovely view across the pond. And a lovely balance finish from Carney. And all in all, everything's lovely because that's a good shot. Yeah, right over the pin. Not the sort of day that J.R. Galbraith would have wanted. Plus one for the day, but not out of this yet. If he finishes with a couple of birdies, you never know. Oh, not like that, J.R. Making hard work now of that 17th. Just out of sorts a bit, really. Up on the home green, Mansell to set what might be an effective mark. Yes, important putt this for Ashley. Give it a try. Certainly looked very close as it crept by the edge. Tap this in. Yep. Nice scorecard. It's, you know, it looks disappointing to bogey the last, but it is a very, very tough hole. Minor sign, not going to be far away. Back to Galbraith. He must feel he has to, well, probably hold this and, and birdie the last, really. From the bunker. He hasn't, does he? Not quite. Excellent shot, though. Well, he should get par at least. And still with hope, given that Anderson is clearly in trouble in fairway sand. It's a bit awkward, uh, Kim, doesn't it? Feet slightly above the ball. He's going for it, though. He's giving it a mighty swipe. That's left. Oh, my word. Goodness me. Where's that gone? Boundary fence there. It's always going to be a tough shot to leave yourself. Normally, you'd squeeze this out going right, but he's just crossed himself. Right hand took over. Go left, as Gary said. Yeah, you could certainly see it whizzing miles left. Well, the news from the course is that it's not next to a boundary fence, it's next to a boundary wall. Young. 
Does he like it? Excellent tee shot. Well, that's okay. Yeah, it is. I mean, actually, that's that's safe. It's a it's a good shot because you know I really can't stress. I know I've said it several times, but this is a very tough closing hole. Carney, one behind the leader. Oh, big chance there, huge. That was for Birdie to get to 11 under. Well, the consolation, it is going to be a tap-in par as we now throw forward to Kit up on the 18th and a very awkward spot for Anderson. Anderson has left himself in an incredibly difficult position here. You've got to play it as it lies up against here. And being right-handed, there's simply no way he can get round and play it. He's got two options. One, flips the club up the wrong way round, tries something left-handed. The other one, maybe just hit it against the wall, see if you can get it out somewhere closer to the green and get up and down. But with a one-shot lead, this is far from ideal by the 18th green. Come on then, Gary. What does he do? Well, looking at this, this is, a, to me, a slightly odd choice. He's using a hybrid or something like that and the back of it, which would have no loft. And, you know, with no loft, it's always going to squirt out uh, with very little control. Personally, I would have thought an upside down with the toe of an eight iron. As you can see, he's hitting down on this. To my mind, Kim, that ball's either coming out like it is, like a scolded cat, or he might have just stubbed it straight in the ground and it popped straight up and down. Yeah, you can get a bit of loft, at least, with a sort of backhanded wedge. Anyway, tough times for Anderson as Mark Young lays it up pretty close. So looks like a par is guaranteed for him on minus nine. This ain't over, Gary. No, it's... Uh, this is... We've had some great tournaments, but this is a very exciting finish from this season. Uh, Anderson down in the sand now. Flips it up nicely. He's got the strength, but as you can see, it's run off about eight feet to the side of the hole. And the stock of Carney has risen massively in the last few moments. Got to find the fairway. Got to. He's staring at it. Just nestling down. Left hand semi. McKechnie has been the forgotten man. This for par on 18. Well, at least a frustrating day has finished. On a pleasing note. Yeah, nice recovery on the back nine there. Two smart birdies. Didn't let it get to him. And that's how important it is. Fantastic putt there. And you have to say, to save his part. Well, this is really, really important for Thomas Anderson. Can he make this? That hurts so much. Oh, he promised so much. Look at the earlier holes around the turn, all those red numbers. It's left them all a bit stunned. Yes. <laughs> Young completes. At nine under, it's up to Mr. Carney then, Phil. Mm. Young, Anderson and Mansell won't be packing away their clubs just yet. It's highly likely that a par will be good enough for Carney to capture the title, but Galbraith retains hope. He certainly does. If he can get it close here, he may just snatch the title. Oh, good positive shot there, Gary, wasn't it? Yeah, it's good. Nicely on the green, long way from the hole, but, you know, it's been an amazing tournament. Lots of twists and turns, and still more to come. Now, this shot could win it for him if he gets it close. Oh, he doesn't like it. Ooh, I think that's down. Could be in the bunker, may just be on the grass. I think Kit will tell us. 
Carney has found the grassy swale just short and left of the 18th green here. And looking at how that ball's lying, it's pretty unpleasant in all honesty. Loads of rough all swirled around it. It's going to be so hard to make a good clean contact on this. One thing he does have in his favour, plenty of green to work with. Starts off uphill, then plateaus out around the pin. The simple maths is this. If Carney gets up and down from here and Galbraith doesn't hold that birdie putt, he wins. If Galbraith takes two to get down and Carney takes three to get down, we have got a five-man playoff. The pressure then firmly on Niall Carney. Oh, he'd love to get it close. Snapping fingers. Is it bold? It is. It's very bold. Oh, my word. Yes, he almost got too good a contact on this one. You could hear it when, when it was struck. Uh, and it's gone over there. That's, he's actually got a very difficult putt up and over there, although it's not that far from the hole. Now, what's Galbraith going to do? Well, in the circumstances, that was poor. It really was. And what it means is that Carney has now got a putt guaranteed to win. Uphill, be firm. Oh, and he isn't. Oh, it's all happening, Gary, isn't it? It's, uh, and not in a good way. No, it's not. This is, you could say, a little bit of a comedy of errors going on here. So Galbraith for a playoff. Oh, he's missed as well. Been a long day for Galbraith. Dear, dear. And a long last hole for Carney and Penge also drops a shot. It's claimed a bunch of victims as 18th under the pressure last day, of course. And after what we've just seen, there's no certainties that Carney's going to hold this to get into sudden death himself. No, it's a tough pin placing on this last hole, but... Oh, you know, you think, right, be firm, knock it firmly in the back, and then you go and hit it too hard. When I said what I said, I never imagined that Kearney would miss that putt, but Kim, it just shows how hard it is to win on any tour. Oh, absolutely. That third shot, he'll rue that. Carbraith. Bogey for him. Another sad finish. It's tough to cross the line, as you say, Phil. 74, minus eight. Kit, what do you make of that? After one of the most insane finishes to a tournament I can ever remember here on the PGA Euro Pro Tour, it boils down to a playoff and there are three men left standing. Thomas Anderson and Ashley Mansell both going for their first ever wins on the Euro Pro Tour. And alongside them, Mark Young. He's already got two trophies in the bag this season. Another win today would take him three quarters of the way to that £250,000 four win bonus. Ashley Weller, the tournament director, shakes hands with the three players involved in sudden death. And after what we've just witnessed, all predictions are off the table. Anderson probably still reeling after his finish on this very hole. Not a nice sight going back to the tee. Mark Young of the three, the only man at par, the uh, 18th in regulation play. Where's Anderson gone this time? Oh, he's on the fairway, that's OK. Ashley Mansell. Can he follow suit and find the short grass? He's not held back. A little bit of a lean. Is that going towards the water hazard? Oh, yes. Well, well, it's not in the water, so he might be able to get the club on and do something with it. When he won, at Camberwell, Mark Young, he won by three from Steve Surrey. But when he won at Clevedon, he won in a playoff against Brendan McCarroll. He's down for the tee. Quickly. 
Good sign. Fairway found. Good drive. Yeah, interesting. Big, big turn. Lots of wrist action in that. It's uh, it's a very much hands and arms, and as we said earlier, old-fashioned sort of swing. Well, he's inside the hazard, can't ground the club. Just got to get back in play. Mansell. Yeah, nicely played. But he's not favourite now. That wasn't playable, it was hackable. Yes. Yeah, he's certainly thrown the advantage to his uh, two fellow competitors. The green awaits Mark Young. Is this his final approach? Nice swish of the club again. Good enough. Very good for distance, Gary. Aggressive, yeah. too. It is aggressive. Not much room. As I said, the pins, as you can see, tucked on the right. He went right for it. Good nerve. When you think about Anderson, not just looking for the trophy, he's looking for redemption. Uh, that would have looked very good to him, and he can't believe he's half a club out. It was right at it, wasn't it? It really was. Oh, must look good in the air. It was almost over the stick. Well, Mansell's going to have to hit one in pretty close. He's giving it a nice swing. He's staring at it. Nice shot, sir. And how well he got ball and turf. That's what you're supposed to do, isn't it, Kim? Yeah. That's the right way around, anyway. He's there for three, remember. Anderson and Young for two. Well, neither one thing nor the other. Too strong and too wide. Oh, dear. Despite that, you have to think either Anderson or Young will make a par. So for Mansell, this has to find gravity. Give it a chance. Well, he did so. His chance is gone then. Well, that pendulum has been really busy this afternoon, and right now it's swinging towards Mark Young. Yeah, barring the bobbles, it did bobble a little bit, which has pulled it up. Um, you know, other than that, it was straight up the hill. But the bobble has left him a nasty tap-in of about the same length that we saw Carney miss earlier on. Anderson, can he make amends? Disappointed with his second to go too far past. This for par. Oh, he had the line if it was softer. Oh. That will surely cost him. Mark Young is not that far away. Mansell must maintain his concentration. Well done. You just never know. But we will know in about 30 seconds if this goes in that Mark Young will have claimed his third title. All he's got to do is slot this. Easy to say, tough to do, but he's done it. Fantastic. What a great last day for Mark Young. I have to say, Gary, he played the 18th hole the best of all the players. Yeah, he did. Kept his nerve, used his experience, experience from winning. Great result. What an outcome. What a twist in the tail at Telfaris. An afternoon on the fringes spent playing catch-up ends with Young lifting his third piece of Euro Pro Tour silverware in 2018. Mark on the mark again. It was grand, and with one more win, it will be 250 grand. It's very difficult to win a golf tournament, we all know that. Um, I'm fortunate to be in the position that that's possible now. Um, but we'll see, if we get to that position again next time, um, it might be a different feeling coming up the last. And what is for certain is you will definitely be promoted to the Challenge Tour next season. How ready do you feel for that challenge? Yeah, it's, it was the goal at the start of the season. Um, whether that be first finish, first place or fifth, um, that's the goal. Um, I've achieved that, which is, I'm more than happy with.
Dave Coupland finished a respectable tied 13th, but still surrendered top spot in the order of merit to the Prem Group Irish master, Mark Young. Jodine, Billy Spooner and Chris Gain continue to occupy the other promotion places. The climax to the 2018 Euro Pro Tour promises gripping golf. For now though, from Tulfaris, it's goodbye.